I think that um, the most successful artists are able to bring people into their worlds and to like explain it. Yeah, I think that's a powerful like trait to have, like being mm -hmm. able to simplify like the abstract and and mm -hmm. kind of put it through a filter and like just spit it back out at for, so it's easier for people to understand. All right, hey everybody, welcome back to the Jesse Nyberg podcast. Today, we're uh, finally live in person. We got a really cool guest, um, Dewey. Is this Saunders or Sanders? Yeah, Saunders. <laughs> okay, cool. So he's like a really talented um, collage artist and a lot of cool album art and just stuff with brands. And I really wanted to bring him on and get a little insight from him. So here he is. How you doing? Good, man. Thank you for having me on yeah. your show. Of course. So what have you been kind of doing lately ever, ever since everything's been closed? Has your work been the same? Um, fortunately, my workflow hasn't really changed too much. Um, I think people are probably making music at a faster rate. Yeah. So there's always a need for album art and single yeah. art. Is that your most like, I don't know about not only like profitable, but maybe like uh, just like volume of work is mostly music stuff? Yeah, I feel like that's definitely my specialty. And I would say like the music stuff isn't as profitable as like advertising or yeah. like branding projects, but it's, more fun. it's definitely like, it's definitely really fun and a great just avenue to work with like cool bands and stuff. Yeah. And I feel like you've worked with like pretty diverse, like, um, like type of artists, you know, yeah. you have like pack and like, future like th even though they're like somewhat in the same genre you can't really like compare them and then you have like turnstile which is yeah not even really the same at all you know hardcore and stuff but yeah it's a completely different world when did you um first get interested in like the analog kind of stuff and like just old magazines and all that i found myself collecting magazines and books um kind of like in the tumblr era and then i would just like post yeah. stuff and kind of like 2012 or something yeah kind of like collect like printed matter and like scans and yeah then like the archive grew and i just had like a huge library to pull from so the collaging thing was always like on the side i mostly came from like an illustration and graphic design background yeah and the collaging was just like in my sketchbooks like random um, nothing really dedicated until, you know, like 2011, 2012, when I like kind of started dipping into my archive to make like more finished collage pieces yeah. and then subsequently like kind of pitched them to like bands and stuff. Cool. You able to move that in just a little bit right there or yeah. scoot in? Yeah, yeah, totally. Just a little more quiet. Yep. But, um... When you started doing that stuff, like with the collage, was that you said as a side project and mm -hmm. were you already freelancing, like just design and illustration and whatever? Yeah, I pretty much had a illustration portfolio when I graduated, which was oh, okay. just like pen and ink drawings. Mm -hmm. And Fine, more like traditional fine art. More traditional yeah. fine art. Um, and then the collage came in my sketchbooks. They would like creep in and in yeah. retrospect, I was always kind of doing them, but I didn't think anything of them. Mm -hmm. um, but they were always appealing to me because they were so engaging and like using photographs. They are almost a little bit more um, just like I can make like pictures more quickly. Yeah. And the illustrations I was doing took forever. Right. So I think that you know, at a certain point, I just started like doing more mixed media and I would kind of like do both. And now it's like my main style is collage, but I right. still do like illustration, like on the side now. And do you <laughs> so do like any different. client work illustration or not really? Um, I've been commissioned, like private commissions mm -hmm. um, when people see like just my illustrations. Just for themselves to enjoy or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Brian Washington, who is one of Tyler's managers, he commissioned me to do like this Jay Z and Diddy illustration of them on That's like, their, like just pagers. for his apartment or house yeah, or just whatever like for his house. So, That's sick. Yeah, it's like I still love illustration, but in the commercial world, it's better to have like almost like one style that the client mm -hmm. knows what they're gonna get. Mm -hmm. So I found myself kind of like 
being like, oh, I, I do collage and illustration. And that yeah. was almost like, uh, like all right, it was well. just like too, like it was just too many styles. Yeah. And uh, do you feel that when now that you've kind of established this like collage look, when you get um, either if you reach out to or if like uh, companies like more like advertising reaches out to you, are they looking for like specifically that like they're already like just do your thing kind of collage um, stuff? Yeah, I feel like the definitely like the collage medium is my most like sought after but mm -hmm. after like doing pretty much like a whole year of more like typographic experiments yeah a lot of the clients cool. last year were hitting me up to do type work oh, okay so it's like it's almost like whatever i'm doing at the time that's what i get hired for and is your type stuff like i've seen some stuff that you've done like that like for um like the Spotify things and stuff like the like covers and whatnot. And yeah. Is that just pretty much all digital then? Well, my type work is similar to my collage work in that I source a lot of, um, type specimens and lettering from like magazines and then kind of stitch them together digitally. So a lot of the type is like found just like, the mm -hmm. collage images are and that's why some of the vintage typefaces i'm working with i don't even know what they are yeah and you just got the letters you got yeah i got the letters <laughs> i got and you know i'll like um sometimes use that as inspiration and then mm -hmm. like use fonts that are similar to that if i have to like spell stuff out but it's kind of a cool process like kind of using these like little like illustrations and you know bits and doodads right. from old like life magazine like ads like right. you can find interesting like line work and mm -hmm. um and after doing a lot of those like logo lockups they kind of translated to the comfort club stuff that i started doing mm -hmm. so yeah. i didn't really know how i was going to apply it but i was really thinking that they could look good, great on clothes yeah. so after like putting together some graphics, I decided to start my own brand mm -hmm. because I had so much like graphic content to work with. Yeah. I mean like, that like the typeface I use for like the logo type, mm -hmm. it's, it's really like in that world of like kind of seventies, like bubbly, yeah. like chubby serif, like stuff. Yeah. Everyone like, like thinks know? it's Cooper, but it's, it's not, not. No. What is it? Secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even a secret, but, um, it's like the Windsor, um, extra bold. Oh, okay cool yeah yeah the little f like that's like a nice little yeah and then i like yeah. i squeeze in and there's a couple of nice little ligatures mm -hmm. that are happening that are like kind of like what makes the logo the logo to me right you see know? a little swooping into the o and so yeah, we'll throw exactly. up a little picture so i'm not yeah. just talking about his t-shirt <laughs> but um like i feel like um what you were saying was interesting too about a little bit back um how you said like, oh, I loved collage work and I loved um, illustration, but like you could produce like just as like respectable things in like a shorter amount of time, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like you just pump out like shit on Instagram, you know, like for how like, I feel like for the level that you're at, you post a lot more often and like consistently than a lot of people that mm -hmm. I follow. And mm -hmm. how do you like stay that consistent, like driven to just, do you backlog stuff? Are you every day just getting something ready? I mean, I feel like even if I posted more at a more rapid rate, I still wouldn't be sharing everything that I've done. Yeah. So it's just like, they're like little sketches and stuff that I like posting cause they're like colorful and mm -hmm. they like, um, as my work gets a little bit more abstract, I like sharing like, you know, behind the scenes and like these little experiments and ideas. Mm -hmm. So basically I'm using it not as a portfolio page really, but as right. a living studio document. Right. And it's almost similar to like how people did use like Tumblr and those things and stuff. Like exactly. it's like a blog and like, I a, mean, and the feed's dead anyway. So it's just yeah. like, I might as well just like use it for what it's worth and, yeah. and really just like lay it all out. You know, um, I think really heavily curated stuff is cool too, but that's just not really my style. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've went through everything from like not caring enough and like just posting shit that's just outright bad at some points <laughs> yeah. or like yeah. being so worried about like, either keeping everything in its own style guide or like colors and yeah. textures. And it's like, you can't even like post half the shit you want to post. Cause you're like, well, it's not white, you know, or it's not black or how yeah, I feel like the really clean grid has like stopped a lot of people from posting stuff that doesn't fit. Mm -hmm. Um, 
It just depends on what you want to do with it. I, I really like just the engagement of like in real time posting up ideas and mm-hmm. getting feedback and um and you can always delete so it's just like yeah you see what hits, or whatever you know what i mean yeah and sometimes you know the internet is a weird place because some of the shit that i'm like fuck it it does like the better than i ever imagined and other mm-hmm. shit you work on stuff for all long and everyone's like it's cool i guess you know <laughs> yeah you can never predict it it's usually the simplest stuff with the most uh appeal to like not common denominator, but you know, yeah. more mass appeal. Like Even the simplest just, concepts do way better, right? Because you know? it's easier to like digest. It's more palatable. You know? um, unfortunately, I, have, I haven't really learned that. Yeah, yet. and I like I'm just like always in my heady world. But I think that um, the most successful artists are able to bring people into their worlds and to like explain it. Yeah, I think that's a powerful like trait to have, like being mm-hmm. able to simplify like the abstract and and mm-hmm. kind of put it through a filter and like just spit it back out at for so it's easier for people to understand. Totally. And um, do you actually? Because you said you're like whatever, I'll post whatever on there at, for, at some point. But yeah, do you get a lot of clients through social media, or is it like through? Do you have any type of like um, management or anything like that? I get clients through social media all the time Mm -hmm. and you can kind of track it, but it's also a little bit unpredictable in that um, usually your work would be spotted in like a couple different places Mm -hmm. for clients to hit you up. And I found that like someone will see my work in like three or four different places then it'll make the connection that I did all those pieces and and then they'll hit me up. and then like, you know, my website has a contact form and mm-hmm. I have a business manager that takes inquiries as well. So it's really, um, you know, it's really easy to get in contact if you're trying to. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't really list my email cause there's nothing is going like to me personally, but, mm-hmm. uh, it's through my website. It's just my name and okay. you can just hit me up. And how did you get in touch with like the free nationals and pack and all that stuff originally? Um, back in 2013 or 2014, I just started doing some like posters for Anderson. Mm -hmm. Um, I was doing a bunch of illustrations actually at the time for like portraits of like rappers and stuff like that. So he wanted one. Um, we were just in loose contact and then all of a sudden he needed a flyer and I was like, all right, well, let's actually do your portrait and just turn that into a flyer. Is this like flyer. pre-Venice still? This was right before Venice yeah. and the flyer was used for a party at the Lyric and it was basically a monthly, I think in 2014. And every week he had a stacked roster of like LA underground. And mm. I remember the last show, the single drugs came out oh. and I did the single cover for that. And then Venice dropped. I did the cover for that and he was buzzing in LA, but I was still in Philly. So even though I was like tapped in and knew you just met him online. pretty Yeah. Much. It was like through like Twitter. Like he hit me up for the flyer or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, we just kind of kept in touch and I remember doing the Venice cover and that was like a big deal, but it was still like early mm-hmm. and 2014, 2015 people, especially on the East coast were a little more unaware of Anderson. Right. So I was like, like California I had like sure. late, I had like planted my seed of like artwork out here and been working with a couple LA cats, but it wasn't really until 20 late 2015, when Anderson and then the team hit me up to work mm-hmm. on the Malibu project. Right. And then things like really started moving for me when that like came out. And then like almost every year later, I, the Malibu cover kept gaining more exposure. It was weird because yeah. like in 2016, when it came out, it was like, it was, it dropped in like January. So like for me seeing like, um, how the cover was going to affect me. I didn't really see that until like years later. And then everybody was like, we want the Malibu cover. We want the Malibu cover. And then you started seeing like a lot of collage work more in like the hip hop space. Mm -hmm. Um, It was interesting, man. Like definitely I felt like because we like worked on so many pieces in the Malibu campaign and like we developed this like really tight collage aesthetic, which Mm -hmm. took my collage work, but tightened it and made everything like really cohesive and conceptual. I mean, that shit was crazy. I remember like first seeing it, I was like super impressed and 
I didn't, I think I, I don't know if I was already aware of you Mm -hmm. or like I, that's one of the factors that brought me to it. But then I remember just seeing that and like, not as like a client, like, oh, we need this work, but saying like, I just want to see more Mm -hmm. of this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think it helped because it was like, especially if you're on the East coast, like this California style, like kind of R and B and like hip hop. And then using that like very surfer, like collage aesthetic, like it's mm. kind of foreign over there, you know? Yeah, totally. And bringing in his whole thing is like, you know, with the different cities over here and everything. So, mm. and do you, do you like, is, are you pretty much, um, I don't know, like he kind of just hits you up now consistently whenever stuff's coming out. Um, well we did a ton of work together in 2019 like in partnership with vans i see yeah that was cool so he did like a house party in chicago at the house of vans skate park Mm -hmm. and i did like a full gallery takeover and then um that was the big ass thing right yeah there was a mural a vr like a virtual reality experience like a plant room like neon uh plant covered like drum kit and then like a firewall so it was it was like a a huge show like with eight different activations yeah and then they played free nationals paid played Katia bonet played and it was really cool and then vans um hit me up to do like their side stripe series which is the band playing in a big shoe box <laughs> and i did the mural behind them for that That's so I don't know if I that was that like one. i feel like that was the last time i officially worked with anderson but i've been working with the free nationals on like their own I just did their doc like helped with their documentary I saw like that. titling and um yeah You're there's, there's there like yeah bit. I'm in there a little yeah. bit and then there's like some more stuff on the horizon with the Nats too that's dope yeah yeah the little doc was cool and it was like Thundercat was in there too right yeah Thundercat yeah. was in there Omas Keith it was you know pretty and pretty that was just kind of like a self-published thing that was through Empire, mm. which is like one of the biggest West Coast labels for oh, okay. underground hip hop and rap and even mainstream. How do you, um, I feel like you do, you do all this stuff. And one thing I thought that was interesting is like your, um, kind of like this, like whole Palm Springs, like getaway, like location thing. Mm-hmm. I feel like I always see you on Instagram, like posting about that kind of stuff. And is that just like a place you like to go to? recharge and like get away from like when you're working and stuff yeah i mean i think like the desert just has a certain appeal to, for like any like angelino just like mm-hmm. dip out to like joshua tree or like right. palm springs or both you know what i mean they're just yeah. like both right there and it's like it's far but it's not you know it's, it's really- not far compared to like other spots in cali it's yeah a, like it's pretty close you don't want to go like- all the way up to like norcal or whatever it's exactly like um yeah so yeah palm springs is chill i actually love joshua tree too um i think the desert just has kind of like a really quiet almost like spiritual kind of vibe and at night it's like in this if you go in like the spring and summer this like skyline and everything is insane like the stars are like over here it's like daytime at night you know from Mm -hmm. all the light pollution and stuff yeah totally yeah, it's just, it's kind of nice to get out of the, you know, out of the hustle and bustle and just kind of yeah. like hear the silence. It's so weird right days. now because like, I don't really go anywhere, like f- for the most part, working yeah. from home and stuff. Like there's times where I'm like, it gets to like, you know, 6 p.m. or something. I'm like, oh shit, I, I should at least go for a walk or something, you know? Cause yeah, just and been especially like working from home, but you know. I almost have the opposite problem because it's so nice every day. I'm look at the window and I'm like, all right, like I have to go yeah. for a walk. And then it's hard for me to like get back in the studio. So I'm more productive, like in the morning, mm-hmm. like really early in the morning, I'll wake up and just get a lot of stuff. Yeah. Done. Your hours in pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Do you, uh, you, cause you can't really, at, at least for the collage work, you're not really going to be able to just take that to like a coffee shop and work on it. You know, you kind of yeah, have to be in your own studio. spread out. Yeah. My, my practice it's, it's not private, but it's like personal, I would say. Mm-hmm. And 
I think that like I'm gonna start kind of opening up my process to the public a bit more mm-hmm. through like tutorials, and I really like how you give um, just like really clean Photoshop tutorials. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to um, kind of skill share. Yeah. Some tips. And so I saw insights. you sharing a little bit of stuff. Exactly. So that's just me dipping my toes into like gaining some attention. Seeing how it feels. Seeing how it way. feels. And I feel like most of my insight is going to come from like Q&A mm-hmm. with people. I so think you, you have enough you know of I mean? people that know to where it won't be like that'll be able to like start off hot. You know, you'll have enough questions in the chamber from people to where like you don't have to even think of like the answers people want, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, um, you know, I just think like it would be cool to make like collage, you know, um, time lapses and yeah. TikToks and just like show how to make like a hand cut piece. That should all I think quick. like uh, live well on like TikTok, especially like yeah. if you record in a specific style that mm-hmm. isn't so much like teaching, but more just like look at this and everything's popping off. Oh you know? yeah, and totally. Like, yeah. You can like really make it magical with editing. And when I'm in the zone, that's like the last thing I care about is like documenting. Hard, yeah. So yeah, it's almost about, um, setting yourself up for that and maybe mm-hmm. having an extra set of hands. Yeah. You might need like a, just a kind of, I don't know, like production assistant or whatever. Right. To help because you with that. yeah, when you're creating it's, it's, uh, that's a whole, yeah. whole space. Especially cause I mean, I'm sure you, you get spread out, you know, pretty wide and you have your, um, like exacto and your couple. Yeah, and totally. And you know, I've like learned how to like do like micro setups and mm-hmm. lately I've been kind of just come composing little pieces on the scanner and like moving those around and like mm-hmm. just ripping a ton of scans and making like double the amount of collages in a way. Yeah. Are you, um, but not gluing anything down. You can pretty much scan in your, uh, assets and then just throw them in like digitally. Right. Pretty so much. yeah, I'll like scan in all the assets and I'll have those digitally and then I'll be free to use those for physical collage too. So that's, what's cool is if you use those and you scan it in digitally, it's easy to like, you know get out to the world but you can still create like uh something that's like one of one it's like still totally. physical and i also think that the hand cutouts feel more organic to me even though like you can't really tell um from first glance my cuts by hand are better than my cuts in photoshop mm-hmm. and i'm just like way more yeah. precise and analog exact. masking so yeah. then like i it saves time i have all yeah. these you know, bits and pieces that are already cut out. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. I mean, like, cause I saw you too, like we were messing a little bit with like, uh, after effects and Mm -hmm. like seeing how you can implement some of that. It's the same process. And I just, I really don't even know how to use it, but I, I think it's cool. I think it's cool to make stuff move around. And yeah, I actually did one like controlled, like one where Mm -hmm. I kind of thought about what it was going to turn out like. And it was this skull and the flowers are like really small and they just like start to grow and like kind of overtake the landscape yeah. and the sun's kind of like going down. So that was a cool experiment. And honestly, like the collage style lends, it's, lends itself so well to animation that yeah, I feel like that's just the next frontier for me. Like after doing those, I kind of just want everything to move now. And since you already are in that like more analog and like I guess hand like rougher aesthetic, mm-hmm. the the animation can be more like a like slower frame rate or whatever, you know, because it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be so smooth because everything's all right. that might even look weirder than it being a little like Yeah, I feel like um it makes m- the most sense for me to animate my stuff because the motion is gonna be like the same motion as the cuts mm-hmm. and the composition. So it's like you know, I want things to like wiggle in and out and grow. And, um, it just takes the, takes like the two dimensional collage work to the next level. And I feel like as an artist, we always like motion is always the next frontier, no matter mm-hmm. what the medium is. It's intimidating sometimes. Definitely. Yeah. You need more power to, to operate. Yeah. That's for sure. Too. Um, do you, uh, like, how do you feel, I guess, um, coming from like what you do and like this, the way that you do it, like a lot more analog. Um, do you have like, how do you feel about like just pure digital and like Photoshop, I guess more like photo manipulation, I guess you could call it or like compositions. Do you think that, um, 
like are you interested in any of that or do you think that like you like it being done strictly this way um that's like an interesting question because sometimes my work is you know digital Mm -hmm. and i'm trying to make it look analog especially for client work for like major labels you have a lot of revisions or whatever it's that and it's licensing issues. Mm. So basically for major, major labels, oh, the, actual the issue photo is, the original. yeah. So basically that's coming from a digital environment mm-hmm. and, um, you know, my more corporate work tends to look a little bit cleaner because of that. Yeah. And I'm not really mad at that. I think that it's a good thing that it looks cleaner because mm-hmm. sometimes the messy stuff that I enjoy so much is just maybe a little too vintage for, you know, um, certain bands and, cold and brands or, or cold brew company. <laughs> yeah. But it just it depends on what the project is. Cause at the end of the day, we're graphic designers and mm-hmm. problem solvers. And, right. you know, I don't approach every project with collage. That's just something that I'm really good at and yeah. people like, but the illustration comes in if it's necessary for the assignment. Mm-hmm. Um, I've illustrated album covers, like the vacationer cover. That's the illustration. Right. Um, and the future, like Hendrix one, the future. Really either, that's, you know? Yeah, it's neither. It's like punk rock, distortion, like yeah. kind of heavy metal. Um, that was actually all in photocopier. Nice. With like just Photoshop color and yeah, it's, it's very like Xerox. Like yeah, it's very Xerox. Xerox. Um, so yeah, it's really like what the project dictates. Mm-hmm. And as much as I love collage, I love to remind people that that's not my no, only one medium. Trick. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I had actually had a question that you kind of touched on there. I was gonna say like, do you approach it differently when working with? let's say like turnstile versus like Ray-Bans, you know? Yeah, because the turnstile stuff, even though, yeah, the turnstile stuff is interesting because um, it's almost like a mixture. It's like really heavily art directed and heavily designed, but using using collage mm-hmm. in a way that's really subtle and then using the photocopy aesthetic in a way that's really subtle too. Yeah. So it's almost like a harmonious blend of like all of my worlds and we're actually working on something right now too nice yeah yeah because they uh if you look in like for example like in the time and space one like with what's within the actual circle Mm -hmm. you can if you don't look at it hard it looks just like a still black and white like film photo you know right and then you see like the little separations and like the um like little circles in there and stuff yeah and did you work on the um is that the first thing you worked on for them or did that's the first thing and then we did the share of you Mm. Uh, mall grab yeah ep because i didn't because i looking at like you know like um non-stop feeling it's like a it's in almost in the same but it's like a different whole like so much more color and stuff you know? yeah totally um you know they they approached me um right before time and space and really were influenced by like ja- old jazz covers and sun yeah. Ra and the direction was so on point that you know, we were able to establish an aesthetic that we've kind of carried out through the other covers Mm -hmm. and the new stuff that we're working on right now too. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. And that, that, that relationship isn't as much like you didn't know them as long as in a way you knew like Anderson and them, right? Um, no, but I would say that we just because we're working on stuff right now, I feel like just kindred spirits and we're pretty close um just on a like art and design level um you know i'm working with the lead singer but everybody in the band is so cool like i really like these guys and i mean they're like shows are fucking dope too yeah they're really dope and you brought that energy into the art you know yeah and i feel like it's just that's the power of good creative direction honestly Mm -hmm. um especially you know as a designer i think that a lot of us are forced to play the role of creative director and designer Mm -hmm. but in the real world it's maybe more harmonious when you have a great creative director and art director kind of leading the project yeah um because the ideation and the 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 conceptual creation, you know, designers are good at that, but I feel like we just are more powerful in a team. So that's, that's one case where they really had a specific idea and my style was perfect for the idea. 
Because if you're sometimes if you're carrying like you know like one man armying it, mm-hmm. I feel like I can get. Uh, by the time you're getting to like the production, you're so burnt out on like conceptualizing from the very scratch or yeah. vice versa. You get, they have it so polished. You're like, so you just want me to plug it in basically and like finish it. Yeah. And there's, you know, there's a different perspective too, because you know, if some people just want, they think they want to be told that they can do whatever they want, but that's actually a nightmare for me. Yeah. Like, go crazy bro is yeah. it like art direction for right. me i'm just like no like let's yeah think about this let's talk about it constraints like are the can be the most helpful and least helpful thing at the same time yeah know? i think constraints for a reason mm-hmm. make a lot of sense like there's no reason to make boxes um just because but you know to be limited in imagery and color palette and and it breeds choices. like innovation, you know, when yeah, you're like totally. back up against the Even wall. working in black and white, I feel like I always like bring it back to the basics because you can do so many things right. without color too. And you have to worry, uh, it, it lets you focus a lot more on like the shape and form and texture and things because mm-hmm. you can't just throw in like that, like neon green to like kind of pop it everywhere, you know? Exactly. And I feel that same way, like... um like you said, people think you want that. Like I've had people that are like more friends. Mm-hmm. They're like, bro, just make me like, I, I need a logo for like this, like fucking pre-roll company or whatever. Yeah. They're like, just do your thing. Like mm-hmm. no, like no limits. And I'm like, all right, well, and I'd already know, like it's gonna, there's going to be limits after I come back <laughs> with the first thing, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, and that's also the thing that we have to recognize is like, Maybe don't spend so much time on the first draft because that's what jogs the client's memory and yeah. so figuring out what they really want. And that's happened so many times where I present something that's you really get attached great. attached to it or something. Yeah, I get attached to it. And they're like, oh, like after seeing this, I actually know what I want now. And that's like part of the game too. But yeah. um, that's just something that we learn along the way. And I feel like you know, establishing a common ground with mood boards and references is just mm-hmm. the easiest way to get on the same page. What's your process in like an onboarding with like, um, is it different with like uh, musicians versus like corporate more stuff or whatever? Yeah. Sometimes a corporate client has the mood board and creative mm-hmm. direction already. Um, but for bands, we'll kind of, some bands will kind of have like a, a lead singer or something that plays like a creative director role and has like a bunch of references correspondence too between like yeah exactly so it's really like every single situation is different and i also have to play creative director a lot of the times as well Mm -hmm. um but i love you know making a good mood board but half of the time i just get inspired by the music and start creating yeah and pulling images and then i just like make like a mock-up and go from there um i also like presenting like one idea i know that's different from like a lot of designers but i think it's something that i learned from like don draper and Mad Men. it's just like anything more than one makes you look like you haven't figured it out yet (laughs) yeah that's a um, you know that's how like you hear those stories too with like uh people like OG logo designers, like Paul Rand or something. Yeah. Like, they're like, where are the options? And they're like, no, you, you hired me. Like, this is what I gave what you, you and that's what you wanted. Right. Exactly. And just like, uh, it's not like yeah. a, it's not like a choose your own story. Yeah. Like choose your own adventure. You right. know what I mean? If you want to design it, like that's fine. We'll charge mm-hmm. you more and you can design it yourself. <laughs> I talked about this too. with Like, uh, cause when I went to school in Chico, like the professors, like I think, they taught me like a good amount about fundamentals and they were mm-hmm. like real OG, you know, like mm-hmm. they went to like the masters, like Yale shit and right. like Rand was like one of their professors and stuff. And, uh, it was like a couple duo and, um, the guy Frank who like kind of headed like branding and stuff, he was like, yeah. Um, when you pitch, let's say you pitch three ideas, he's like, if never pitch the one that you like the least, cause they'll choose that one for oh, sure, totally. you know, and then you yeah. got to run with it. Yeah. Kind of like did it to yourself, mm-hmm. you know? That's happened to me a lot of the times too. Um, yeah, it's funny. I I really like presenting one cover and I think that, you know, a lot of clients are expecting just to be able to pick from like 15 or 20. Does it usually like, is it usually a good response? But with type, with type I'll do that. Like, oh, okay. Like yeah. all like the finishing stages, it's like, all right, like which one do you like better? You mm-hmm. know? What, um... Like, what do you, what would you think is like the favorite just thing you've worked on overall pretty much? 
Um, well, the House of Vans art installation was great because I was given the opportunity to work with more of a budget than normal. Yeah. So I got to um, kind of scale up a lot of my ideas, like a collage mural that was, you know, 18 feet wide. How was the cutting out of that stuff? So I got everything printed in like huge pieces. So okay. I basically sent them, you know, Photoshop files of stuff that I cut oh, out. die cut it pretty much? And they die cut it. And basically it was kind of like working on like a massive collage. I had spray mm -hmm. mounted all the huge pieces. Like Damn. Anderson's head was like this big on the wall. It was awesome. And just extra set of hands. That's cool. Yeah. And then it was like a, those like checkered shoes, right? Wasn't that like part of the... So... I, yeah, like the Vans checkerboard is a big part of their brand. So mm -hmm. I incorporated that in both projects I did for them. Mm -hmm. um, I made this like checkerboard, like tunnel, kind of like op art. I was just playing with all these different, like, was it fun? Effects. Like the actual event? Did and the event was insane. Yeah. Like they let in like a thousand kids for free. Oh, what? That's and cool. yeah, it was amazing. It was just like a live show in a skate park and just seeing the, the mural like in real time in the party was amazing. And the virtual reality experience was something new for me too, because yeah. I basically created this Venice beach skateboarding experience myself where I rented a, like a, um, like a 3d camera. It's like, Oh shit. And filmed all the footage and had my riding friend around convert it to VR. Yeah. Riding around uh, Venice beach and Damn, basically vans set up a, like you know six skateboard um deck where the boards were mounted into the ground but people could ride them with the vr set oh, and what? it was so real that like i almost like fell off the board like we had bike racks set up because it was right. like it was like a ride basically yeah so that was like it's something like Tony Hawk that VR. expanded my like artistry into like a different medium completely mm -hmm. but like we had like my artwork popping up in the experience, like as murals in Venice beach. That's sick. So that was like a really cool, inclusive way. And it was in Chicago, way. you said? This was in Chicago. So they're like, what the fuck? We had Venice like a beach? taste of LA never seen this, in Chicago. Know? Yeah. So that was like something that kind of expanded me as an artist. Um, and then I really just like doing these kind of like solo exhibitions. Um, I did one at the Urban Outfitters space. A lot of that's like a lot of the gradient stuff and things. A lot like. of the gradients and stuff like that. Yeah. So those are really great. And then as far as like commercial projects, um, the Ray-Ban campaign was one of my favorites to work yeah, on so. because we, it was just a full like 40 asset campaign mm -hmm. and everything was animated as well. So that one looked a lot more, um, like they gave you uh, some freedom in the way of like how you laid everything out. And they, stuff. they, there was a lot of boxes, but a lot of freedom within that. Like mm -hmm. I got to do my thing. Yeah. Um, and that was really cool because you got to see it in the world, like at the stores, like yeah. in the, the displays, like as you know, they're out of home and all yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that as like a graphic designer, seeing the project exist like that in the mm -hmm. real world, that's always the most satisfying thing. Same thing with yeah. the future, like, um, you know, seeing the work I did for, for the that, wizard. Right? Yeah. They had billboards for that and in times square. So I feel like that's like the most affirming thing as a designer, seeing yeah. your work exists in the real Let's world, take a picture, like, knowing that people are just <laughs> seeing it. And yeah. loving the fact that it's just existing in people's visual fields, not like, you know, they don't know who you are, but you're, you're shaping people's yeah. environments anyway. And that's, what's cool. Like, um, oh, especially like, I feel like you've probably experienced some of this, like when you start getting more of that audience, they're like, wait, that was you, you know? And like, you're totally. Like, yeah. yeah. There's always, I feel like that's why it's important to post you know, work that you've done and maybe posted before, because mm -hmm. as we get new followers, you know, it helps They're to like aware, refresh yeah. and to connect that. And there's still a ton of people that follow me that didn't know I did like the Malibu cover. Yeah, and I like actually love reason. that because it's like an element of discovery. Yeah. And when people make that connection and come to me, I think that's so cool because as in, an art lover, I would be doing the same thing and getting geeked when I realized the same artist did a yeah. couple of my favorite covers or whatever. So right. I always, I'm like tickled and like really like humbled. And I just love when people like, reach out and they've seen the work in the real world. And then if you, they discover it later, like you were saying, then you know that it wasn't only that, that like got you 
them as a fan or whatever mm-hmm. they even were liking what you're still doing you know it wasn't like a one <laughs> yeah. thing and this is a little bit different but it's just important to keep on chipping away at, like every project like you know making it your best one because when that comes out, it just reaffirms your past clients that they made the right choice yeah. to hire you previously and increases your chances that they will come back and hire you That's after seeing point. the new project. Yeah. And uh, what made you, I know you said you had a lot of stuff with um, type and things. What made you start with the comfort club stuff? Like, mm. is it, was there any inspiration behind it other than like, Oh, I I have like, I want to do some more type stuff or whatever. Definitely. Um, Well, I feel like probably being on like lockdown and quarantine had a lot to do with it because I was in sweatpants all the time and really had a little bit of extra time Mm -hmm. to kind of experiment. So really I was going to do just like a sweatsuit for like friends. And the more I started posting, the more people started, you know, showing their interest in it. Yeah. Um, so I, I kind of like took a bunch of ideas from this poster series called giant leap. I was doing, I tried to do a poster a day in 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, I ended up doing like 45 or something. I got too busy, Yeah. but then I started going back and looking at them, realizing they would look really dope on clothes. And I'm like, okay, you know, maybe that was a- when you had a lot more of the like, um, like iconography and stuff. Exactly. Like yeah. So I kind of wanted to like breathe fresh life into those designs. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a couple ideas for a brand. And then like, you know, things just kind of like came together at the end of the summer, I decided on the comfort club and it was kind of like a capsule collection. I had pitched to a different brand and realized that I really liked it and decided to keep it for myself. And like the life in the zone idea was from that. And really it just seemed like a, an entity in itself. So I wanted to just kind of like focus on that and grow it. I've always wanted to do a clothing brand because, um, it's always like a small, like fantasy for like any designer. I feel yeah, like. I, I feel like I've, I saw a lot of friends doing it and not like I just wanted to like jump in and join the fun. I feel like mm-hmm. I have something like unique to offer. And yeah. It's been received really well. And, you know, I just, I keep on scaling it up slowly and, and like, you know, uh, increasing the quality and do you have, have a, like our own tags now is it just it's you just like it's just me but i definitely have like a team of friends helping like mm-hmm. it's i definitely wouldn't say it's just me but yeah, i'm like I designing faces yeah i'm like, like designing everything and um but also receiving a ton of help and kind of incorporating yeah. other friends ideas and stuff it's cool too like um you know as a designer especially someone that's already kind of found like a style or like established like skills you don't have to really um you can make it yourself you know like mm-hmm. some people have ideas but then they have to figure out if they can get a designer to do it for them you know it speeds up the process a lot more it does speed up the process and you know i feel like i'm just getting started with mm-hmm. exploring the language and the vernacular of comfort club i yeah. feel like we've definitely established a lot of the house style but it's a really cool platform for me to play around and do different stuff like through that avenue and apply it to even like one-off pieces and just, you know, I feel like zines and publications and like different like offerings are going to be a big part of it as well. So it's kind of like boiling down everything that I do and using the comfort club as a launch pad to kind of like push out some like cool merch and ideas. That's cool. So not yeah. just like, not strictly wearables. Like yeah. Not, not strictly stuff. wearables. Like we put out a candle and we have some jewelry coming out. Yeah. So it's almost like a, like a lifestyle, like home goods yeah. idea. Um, and it's just interesting to see where it can go. Like yeah. Terry cloth bathrobes and slippers eventually, right. you know? So and I fuck like with the like concept because like, I mean, I have jeans and a shirt on right now, but like, this is the farthest I'll go for like <laughs> wearing anything dressed up in the past year. You know, yeah, I'm yeah, mostly yeah. just like, I, I had to up my game on just like fucking gym shorts and sweatpants. Cause like you wear them every day after yeah. like five days, you're like, shit, I'm used to wearing like dickies and shit every day or whatever. Totally. Yeah. And we're all at the crib now wearing more sweatpants than ever. So might as well look 
clean and stylish and be super comfortable yeah at totally. the same time is your um since like you're at we're all at home still I, you strictly touched on or slightly touched on this in the beginning you were were you already kind of working that way anyway like you weren't you had your studio and nothing's really changed with it yeah right? i've always been someone that worked from a home studio mm -hmm. because i think like with my collage practice it just made the most sense i have like a huge collection of books and magazines and that kind of creates like the aura in the studio kind of like energetically i like being able to have my resources around me and so like make different yeah. connections on the spot um, is it separated in like, I guess, your non um, practice and like working life from like just your living room or whatever? Or is everything a lot more like one big unit? Well, I try to keep it separated, but eventually with like collage, I end up like working like wherever the light is the best too. Yeah. And it's like bleeding out to the side. It bleeds <laughs> out. And then I ended up doing like bigger stuff on the floor too. So it's like, it's really just a matter of, um, you know just kind of like going with the flow and then when i work on like really big pieces i wish i had like a bigger studio but then i'm like doing design work on my computer for a couple of months so yeah. it doesn't really warrant like a big studio space yet but i feel like i will head into a direction where you know it's a separate building it's a separate building and i can work because i really do like working bigger and especially with collage too like um they my collages can get like as big as i want them to get now mm -hmm. so it would be cool to kind of push that when you're posting stuff online are you is some of that stuff a lot larger than you would think and you're scaling it down or are you making it to like the 1350 by 1080 or whatever it is um if i post the dimensions that means it's like a, a, a pretty big physical piece and uh, you should pay specify. attention to the inches yeah um but other than that it's usually like whatever fits on my scanner or yeah. like a Photoshop. Document. Eight and a half by 11 or whatever. But if I work in Photoshop, I usually like work with a huge file size in case the piece comes out really fire and I want to do prints from mm. it. I just always start really big. Yeah. I had a piece I did for my uh, homies. Like we did this like kind of, um, what do you call it? Like renegade, like rave thing out in like near Joshua tree. Yeah. And, uh, that thing was like 24 by 36, like the source file. Yep. And it started getting like ridiculous. Like it was like, you know, 12 plus gigs or whatever. And I had like, uh, I was trying to, you know, I try to put up a lot of the stuff for like people that are on like my Patreon and stuff to like download it and they can dissect it. And I was like, I don't think your, your computer's going to handle this. Like yeah. someone was reaching out, like I have a, like a Mac laptop. Like I was like, I don't think you could open this. It's like a PSB or whatever. You oh know? yeah. Like large huge. Photoshop format. And like, uh, I, I just automatically start off saving my files in that way. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's how it felt lately. I'm like, who am I kidding? Like this shit's getting over two gigs. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I feel like, uh, that's why I made a switch. Like I was always kind of Mac loyalist, loyalist, but I just couldn't like do it, man. Like the price was getting me like so annoyed. So I just built like a PC that makes I've sense. Been on that since there. Yeah. You're pretty much, uh, you work on just like a desktop Mac or what? Yeah, I've been with, yeah, just like using Macs for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see when I start doing more animation and video work. But right now yeah. my setup is, it works. You know, it's a good workflow. Yeah, because you're mostly, it's like static. So it has it's to. a static, yeah. And then even with like little GIFs or even little animations, if you're it's doing totally the, fine too. I think it'll help for, you know, You'll probably have to look into it when you do like the Skillshare or anything like that. Yeah, exactly. Once I started trying to make YouTube videos, I was like, holy shit, like my laptop's going to fucking fly into the air, you know? Yeah. The fan and everything. Yeah. Like the MacBook Pro is like, they're great. But once you get into some serious work, you just yeah. got to step it up. And it's, you feel like you're working on such a big thing in this little thing, you know? Yeah. It's find after a while. Totally. Do you, uh, like the one last thing I kind of wanted to ask you is, uh, how do you like, do you have anyone that you get inspired by consistently or look up to and not only either, I guess the design world or just art, anything like that? Definitely. Um, I try not to like look at too much contemporary stuff. Um, so you're but, back for it. Yeah. It's funny because, um, I haven't really been following his recent work, but I live 
on the same block as Shepard Fairey's gallery. Oh, really? And Studio One. Because some of that old shit was fucking cool. Like, yeah, even before even, El Bay and all Even, that. like, his current stuff, like, it's still really good. It's just different than what I'm checking for at mm-hmm. the moment. But that's somebody that I really look up to as far as how they set up their business infrastructure. Mm. Because um, I've always dreamed of having, like, a multi-level building where an art gallery exists on the first floor a design studio is attached to it mm-hmm. and there's an also a different studio for a you know brand comfort club or whatever exactly yeah. so i just you know i take notes and see the fedex guy pull up every day yeah and the tubes of prints they're shipping out and i'm just like okay yeah. this is somebody that has figured out the formula you know and although Obey as a clothing line isn't anything that we necessarily are checking for anymore, yeah. it's still like this template that I'm inspired by. It's, it's still like, like it's, it's still a mega. People brand. are buying that. People shit are buying still, it, yeah. and it's like it's like wow, like this is a success story. Like right. this is what I want as well. He also did a good job at like it was a good point to call out like whatever you think about like obey or like you know like being a streetwear like clothing brand it's so easy for you to become like not cool again all of a sudden or whatever but he did a good job of whatever you think about that like his fine art and like actual shit is still like insane you know and then yeah, if you have a galleries exactly. like if you just look at that stuff it's still like uh it doesn't matter what the other shit is you know it doesn't matter and you're right like in the streetwear world it's so easy for the trends to shift Mm -hmm. but he is a working artist is pumping out great work he has you know a design agency called studio one that has major major international clients Mm -hmm. and i just think that the way he separated his skills into different businesses and then he had swindle magazine too so i'm like okay like, even though this stuff is, like, what I grew up on and it's, like, not, um, you know, Swindle is not around anymore, that's still, like, this amazing template to look at. Yeah. And, you know, I'm inspired by so many different people, but I just see this building on my corner every day and I'm yeah. like, okay, like... And where is like that print, at? Print Echo sales. Park? Yeah, Echo Park, like, right on Sunset. Mm-hmm. Um near the stadium oh okay but it's like print sales clothing gallery and then agency it's like there you go that's, that's a that's cool the, idea the to have like formula. the architecture too to actually be like yeah that's like some like evil villain shit you know like totally. just having the different and i see shepherd pull up in his tesla every day and i'm like okay like this is such a cool way for me to visualize what mm-hmm. i want as a future artists like future yeah and it's like easy to like uh, manifest it if you're like right next to it you know yeah it's exactly i'm window. picking up the energy every day like yeah. seeing the designs in the windows and yeah i'm like you know almost about to knock on the door and just say what's up but yeah um you know it's just cool like creatively to have that on on the corner because i looked up to him growing up and mm-hmm. you know the whole like beautiful losers movement with yeah. barry mcgee and um you know and I mean, those everyone, green and just all these artists. That and when everything like that, when he did like the, all the Andre the Giant shit, like mm-hmm. everything that was like, just like, you know? Yeah. Was, that's like such a, an amazing story of how this, it's like one of the original memes in a way, yeah. like, you know, yeah. before like the internet got a hold, like this thing was, you know, causing some attention. Yeah. As a sticker. Yeah, that's so really cool. What was um, one thing I want to tell you? Uh, I want you to be able to just like throw out all your links and everything like that. Okay. Just, like, well, my website up. is just DeweySaunders.com. Uh, Instagram and Twitter, Dewey Saunders. So good. Yeah, it's just really <laughs> easy. I think that's also like a, a tip for younger designers, kind of like establishing like what your name is and like maybe just using your real name yeah and like having the same picture and mm-hmm. and same like uh you know use your name for all your stuff like just yeah, to keep, that helps. keep it consistent yeah yeah and then the comfort club is it like usa or something like that oh what so is? it's comfort club.us oh, okay cool. yeah all right sweet i mean i really appreciate you coming yeah. out man it Thank was you. like cool to finally meet you and uh, yeah it was a great talk good conversation appreciate you having me And I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, definitely go check out all his stuff and we'll see you guys next time.